Why is it that some athletes can keep their calm and perform in moments of extreme pressure and others cannot? How is it that some athletes can perform in situations so stressful that even the spectators are too anxious to watch? Why is it that when everything is on the line, some athletes can pull off the seemingly impossible while others choke under the bright lights? In this video, I'll be summarizing sports psychology research to answer these questions. When you're in a situation in which you perceive that there is something valuable on the line and you aren't sure that you have the skills to rise to the occasion, your body initiates a physiological and psychological response called the stress response. All of us are familiar with this response. It is the butterflies we feel when talking to the person we're attracted to, the shaky legs we feel when speaking in front of a group of people, the sweaty hands we get when we experience heights, or the tension we feel when looking at snakes. These situations cause our heart rate, blood pressure, and breathing to increase and our tension to narrow. These physiological effects can negatively influence our focus, which is what often leads us to choke. There are four theories that explain how this happens. Distraction theory, signal detection, conscious processing, and ironic effect. Let's dive in. Distraction theories tell us that stress can impair our ability to process information. When our ability to process information is impaired, we miss important details in our surroundings. Stress can also disrupt the balance between two attentional systems, our top-down system and bottom-up system. The top-down system is our voluntary attention system, responsible for directing our attention on our goals. In this example, the location of our teammates who we'd like to pass the ball to. The bottom-up system is our involuntary system, which instinctively responds to the most noticeable and potentially threatening stimuli, such as the defenders. When we feel anxious, our attention can shift from top-down to bottom-up. This causes the quarterback to miss important information about his surroundings and make a bad pass. Signal Detection Theory In high-pressure situations, we can feel so anxious that we become hypervigilant and supersensitive to stimuli. Examples of this are the false starts that sometimes occur in swimming and track and field. Essentially, what happens is that the stress response makes our nervous system excessively excitable, which leads us to act before the proper time. This is also a common occurrence in football, when players cross the line of scrimmage too early and get called for offside. Conscious processing. Another reason why athletes choke under pressure is because they think too hard about their movements, a phenomenon also referred to as paralysis by analysis. For example, when we are first learning a skill, we rely heavily on our prefrontal cortex to think about the step-by-step -step mechanics of the movement. With enough practice, our movements become more efficient and we learn to perform them automatically and without our conscious attention. What happens in high pressure situations is that the stress response can make us feel self-conscious and lead us to try to force a good outcome. When we try to force a good outcome, we think too hard about movements that we normally perform automatically and without thinking. And this disrupts the automatic process. Ironic Effect Theory In pressure situations, athletes tend to do the very thing that they're trying not to do. To explain how this works, I'm going to give you a challenge. I challenge you to not think of a penguin. If you're like most people, you won't be able to suppress this thought. By trying to suppress the thought of a penguin, you will simply bring it back to your attention. In high pressure situations, this effect intensifies. An example of this was when Cody Parkey hit the upright four times in one game. Instead of directing his attention on where he wanted to kick the ball, Parkey's attention was ceased by the thought of the outcome that he wanted to avoid. By trying to suppress the thought of the upright, Parkey brought the thought back into his mind, which led to it happening again and again. To summarize, the different reasons why we choke under pressure are 1. We miss relevant information in our surroundings and focus on unhelpful stimuli. 2. Our nervous system becomes hypersensitive to stimuli, leading us to act prematurely. 3. We think too hard about our movements, which disrupts the automatic processes. And 4. 
By trying to suppress the thought of a bad outcome, we end up focusing our attention on it, which ironically leads to it happening. It is usually a combination of these four mechanisms that leads to bad outcomes in pressure situations. The videos on my channel include strategies to help you overcome the negative effects of stress and perform under pressure.